I love the way that you accept all the different cultures that come to Accelerating Aotearoa. It really, truly mm. is, um, you know, an open space for all. This podcast is proudly supported by the Ōtara Network Action Committee, ONAC, community-owned, community-driven and community-led. Kia ora whanau. it's Judy Spate back again sharing with you the We Ōtara podcast. We're really, really appreciative to ONAC for the support that they've given us um, putting We Ōtara together. So big shout out to ONAC, the Ōtara Network Action Committee. And Disco Papa, which is so important. You know, with the We All Tara podcast, we're celebrating local people and their achievements as locals and their achievements outside All Tara and within All Tara. But on top of that, we're also celebrating those people that dedicate their lives or dedicating their work to supporting All Tara and, and things in this wonderful kainga. So today, it's my delight to introduce you to um, Pragna Patel. Pragna's been um, a colleague, I've called her a colleague of mine over the last four four years, I think, or around that. Um, we work beside each other doing a whole lot of different things at different projects, um, working at, um, across different trusts, and I've become a, a great admirer of um, Pragna's tenacity, that she's determined to to stamp out rodents. She's determined to make sure that we're all accountable in terms of our waste um, su- sustainability, that we use waste food, that we use waste anything in an appropriate manner. And we've learned so much from her in that way. Come on and meet uh, Pragna Patel. And I know you'll enjoy this podcast as much as I did. Kia Pragna, it's amazing for you and me to be sitting here just after our end of year Christmas party where we're hanging on for grim death and here we are, relaxed as anything, Yeah, just reflecting, reflecting. on the ability or that the, I guess the gift of collaboration, the opportunity that we've had to work together and, mm. and where, what that's looked like this year and where we might take it in the future. So do you remember where it was we actually met the first time? Um, I think we, when I was working at the Fresh Gallery, I think that was one of the because you came across came along mm. and told me about the space, and that was one. Is it when Helen was still there? Yes, and you were being yes. recent artist or recent creator. No, or? no, I, I was just a casual, and I was looking for uh, my next adventure, and I thought that I would like to pursue um arts education and um lovely helen um gorgeous lady introduced mm. us um and then i went on to work at that botanic gardens that was my mm. intro so i'd had learnt about accelerating aotearoa at that early stage um and then after that working at manukau beautification trust mm. learning about how great a spot this was and experiencing the lack of equity that I saw um, being offered to students. That was a big thing about my work at the Botanic Gardens. Um, I was responsible for booking in schools um, to have the learning from experience programs, and which are brilliant. And the Botanic Gardens is universally a wonderfully Loved nurturing and space. Yes space um but i noticed that the, the, the schools from the south weren't coming through particularly schools in otara and um and, and for the people that don't know the botanic gardens the auckland botanic gardens is right in the heart of south auckland absolutely yeah, yeah mm. in manurewa and mm. and i just what i was trying to figure out what the barriers were for kids to school teachers to to come um and then working at Manukau Beautification Trust, um, running the Eye on Nature program um, for them as a contractor, we have a remit to provide um, a service to our South Auckland schools. And again, um, the coverage of the Otara schools was lower than I wanted. Um, and it did improve. And 
that was a really that was a highlight um and what the teacher said to us was that there's so many barriers for the kids to get out of school to have other experiences mm. and not just um financial but just um support on the ground in terms of um, helpers you know you cannot have a school trip without adequate helpers in terms of ratios um so i was really excited to come to accelerating atero and experience geek camp um and at the time uh, the team didn't have any outreach work i made a commitment to come mm. and offer the program that we were running mm. to the geek camp kids as a volunteer mm. and um yeah blown away by the level of engagement by the kids mm. for me that's been the most exciting thing that's mm. happened in the last over the last two years yeah. and it wouldn't have happened without you it just wouldn't have it because i i maybe i was just too scared to do it it is a scary experience because mm. we you know we're saying when we take the kids out we holding our hands up and saying that we are going to be loco parentis mm. you know we are going I mean, to we were there anyway here yeah but, you but, are here but outside mm. it's a different story and then the kids are are super excited how are they going to be when they go out mm. you know it's the you know the head count all the time and we all got all our little bunnies mm. um <laughs> But um oh well yeah team gone <laughs> we need another team over here <laughs> but mm. i think the trips that we've managed to organize have been really good and spectacular the heart and heart, heart to heart responses from the kids has also been like motivates you to just keep doing it because yeah. the wonder that you're able to capture by being with them when they go out and they will say i think a lot of things that a lot of Auckland kids take for granted mm. in terms of going to amazing spaces in our community. These kids don't. There's this um, analogy about um, a pebble in a, in a pond and the concentric rings that are created. And there's a awareness that um, our modern kids do not travel much with much outside of their immediate circle of their neighborhood, you know, perhaps to the end of the street. Certainly many kids don't go to the dairy by themselves anymore. Those kinds of things that, um, you know, normal New Zealand experience are, are not normal. Well, if you're a higher socioeconomic then you, your parents or family members take you out to all these other places, mm -hmm. certainly to other beaches, museums. And unfortunately, our the group of students that who are able to access the resources at Accelerating Aotearoa don't get the, those opportunities to go to a wider circle. Mm. Even something seemingly still in South Auckland, they will never have experienced. Yeah. Well, certainly, I mean, that, that was the experience that we had when we went... Um, our first trip this year, I think it was, when, we, when the kids went to Devonport. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the mums said to me, well, hell, you know, I've never been on a train before. Mm -hmm. never. So we went on a bus, then we went on a train, and then we went on the ferry. And, you know, here's a, a nation of seafaring people that, you know, found mm -hmm. us using... Part of your whakapapa. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we didn't get... Yeah, we haven't been on a ferry. So to me, that was a really exciting thing to do and, and certainly talking to Jamaica about whether, whether we might go, oh, I've got to get back to Devonport again. And maybe we will. But mm. the, the very last trip that we did was the one to the zoo, which uh, I guess and it, that goes back on your socioeconomic conversation. You know, for every well, for many children and, and, and often they would assume and their parents would assume every child in Auckland going to the Auckland Zoo, mm. you know, as part of their child, childhood stories. Yeah. And yet for our kids it wasn't. I mean, when we arrived, the guy said, how many people have been to the zoo? About five out wow. of 40. Wow. Yeah. I didn't think it was that low. Yeah, crazy. I, I can tell you a little bit about perhaps some explaining some reasons why. Um, the zoo themselves, um, schools have to pay a – Ex, a, a certain portion of the entrance mm. and it, it annoys me because uh, Auckland Zoo is a, a rate payer funded mm, um, owned by organization the Auckland City Council. and it's you know it's it's mm. for Aucklanders paid by Aucklanders and s certainly school children should who schools who cannot afford to send the kids or take a parent or contribution definitely should just be eligible I mean 
Mm. That in itself, I think that to be in a, a, at a school to gauge who has actually been of their, you know, under their own steam with their families and mm. to discover how few of them have been should be, you know, mandate enough to say, here you go, here's a free, free class trip. I think, mm. you know, that's... And, well, yeah. yeah, and so we won't discuss how much we paid for it, but it's really, it, it, I'm putting that back on the individuals in that school. Mm. It's, it's up to them to find a way. I mean, mm. that's what we do, isn't it? We yeah. do what it takes. And that's what I was thinking, uh, matching our who are earrings. This is a team that does what it takes. That's what we are. <laughs> and you don't get them unless you do what you take. So watch us, check out those that wear the, the who are earrings, the Prager and Judy Club. Yeah. They're the people that do what it takes. Um, Got to do what it takes. And I guess I would say mm. that rather than being a normal process kind of thing, yeah. Um, to make a difference for our kids, for these kids that have got nothing, mm. we have to even the playing field somehow. And part of that is just sheer yeah. determination. That there's no trickery. It's just about being doggedly determined. Yeah, and it, and just yeah. saying that the kids deserve this. Mm. And it and and you know again that analogy of putting the pebble in the you know water, yeah. creating this is you, you've you've got to put something in to create change, and. The change will be the positive change will be felt over time. You're not necessarily mm. going to see an immediate, you know, um, you know, like that social media or gameplay kind of immediate reaction. You're going to see it over time. And I, I, I shared with you before about how I witnessed the change at Geek Camp. Mm. You know, um, I committed to being here for a two week period. You know, over you know for a couple of hours a day, and I noticed how after being here after the first week the, the kids were really settled and a lot of it was to do with the fact that they have breakfast together they have a, this amazing nutritious lunch and anytime they're hungry in between there's something really nice available and that kind of certainty about you know a full puku you know with a meal shared with friends made a huge impact on the well-being mm. of the kids that was really for me a, a, another Really strong lesson because, because I mean, I guess these are so much part of what we've been doing that some of the magic isn't that clear mm. anymore. But you've given an amazingly sharp lens on a lot of those things, mm. and the food security piece is something I think about a lot now since mm. your observation um, with the conversation. That, yeah, it's at school, the kids have got breakfast club and lunch club, mm. some schools even have dinner club, um, in the school holidays. The kids are home all the time and the cupboards have got nothing in them. Mm. And, you know, where does that food come from? So I, I think maybe going to the zoo is, is a Band-Aid by comparison to, to food poverty. Mm. Um, how and can the, we and, create and prior food to security? us going on trips, you know, just simply having exciting things to do, morning mm. and afternoon at Geek Camp, um, mm. was enough for them to, you know, have smiles every day. Yeah. And just the numbers, you know, like there's a lot of kids here. There are a lot. <laughs> but know. back in the olden days before COVID, we used to have 60, and I, I think it's so much smarter at 40. I think they were much more comfortable. Yeah. Between well, 30 and 40. Have, like, everyone's yeah. having a quality experience. Mm. Um, you've got clusters of little mm. friendships that are allowed to blossom. Mm. And uh, over time, I've really noticed the impact on the tweens, um, the kids who are, you know, the hoodie and grunting conversation, and and the girls that we love so much about teenage boys. You know, the girl, mm. the the kids who, um, you know, don't necessarily want to engage in the activities; they just want to hang. And I think the fact that Geek Camp gives them just a place to hang uh, on their terms, I think, is super super important mm. because they're like, it's particularly in the winter Geek Camps, there's not many places that you can go. But at the same time, you know, if there's some stuff going on where the, we don't tolerate um, poor behavior, poor language, mm. or people fighting, um, and I think the kids know that, they, that they're that they safe, emotionally safe as mm. well. And um, that's another magic thing that I see about Geek Camp, mm. that there's a space and place for everyone, and particularly those kids who are quiet at school, under the radar, you know, but don't really get a look in. Yeah. I remember in particular a couple of years ago and you 
he had a beautiful photo in, in our end of year wrap up we'd done for Curious Minds. It was mm. of the young girl sitting in the corner in the mm. reading corner reading. Mm. Do you want to tell that story? Oh wow! I, I was, you know, I just treat all the kids the same. You know, we're doing a doing a bit of work, and I'm like, oh, we're going to have a go at this. Perhaps you'd like to write a sentence um about what we've been doing we've been doing some stream testing and so I could see that she was having some challenges with school and writing and I said doesn't matter let's just have a go at one sentence quietly she sat down by herself gave her a bit of sentence support structure and just said just write one that's enough for me you know you don't have to write loads she sat and wrote it afterwards we find out that this young lady is in and out of school because Number one, she's on Ritalin. Number two, she just never sits still. And as for writing a sentence, it just never happens in her school mm. day life. So I just think, wow, you know, what was it in the recipe of Geek Camp mm. that enabled her to feel, A, safe enough to just do it, mm. and B, she felt motivated to write something relevant that, would, that related to what we were doing. So even though it just was just one sentence... And she said it, it was okay for me to take a picture because I always ask for permission. And she just didn't want a face in it. She mm. just says, it's fine, you can take it as long as I don't have to look at the camera. And she was just looking with a yeah. picture. Yeah. But, um, yeah, blew my mind when I mm. found out afterwards. Because all the other youth leaders were kind of saying to me, be careful there, be careful there, you know. And I'm like... Has she been big? Once. Once. I'm still... For a short time. It's never quite clear who it was, but it is a beautiful... When we think about... The really special things that you want to hang on to forever, you know, that food security piece in mm. the broader scenario. But that little girl, those are huge, aren't they? Can you think of anything else that just blows your socks off? Another thing that blows my socks off is um, I, I, aside from the work I do with Judy, I uh, work with um, Bhutanese refugees. Some of them have resettled in Otara and they also come to Geek Camp, the lovely family of Chanrots. Mm, we and, loved them. Um, I met Dad the other day. Well, oh, I met cool. him before, but he came to pick up the food. <laughs> He's <laughs> really, really cool. Um, mm. and he, uh, I took, I've been doing the stream testing, pH, um, some statistics with them as part of another project that I do. Um, and I couldn't, I can't take them to, they come to a homework club in Panmure Library every Wednesday. So I just chose to do the learning there. Then there was an opportunity to work with Tipu Angamara in an activation in Henderson. Mm. So I thought, well, this is your one trip that I can take you. So I took the kids, uh, six of them. Uh, over and um, love the lovely Sandra who's come to help with us at mm. Geek Camp, the science teacher. She accompanied me there because she lives out west. And um, they had to do an activation all about stream health. They had to do the uh, clarity test and talk about the macroverte- macroinvertebrates and also the traffic light system. My gosh, gold stars. Out mm. of the f- six teams that turned up on a community based invitation, the, my team won. So they not only did they get the answers right for the stream testing and why the reasons mm-hmm. why you do things and the inferencing, but they also did all the Nahiri stuff and got all the um, natives correct. So I was super proud of them. And they did say that, you know, we've learned this with you at Homework Club and then we've learned this stuff at Geek Camp. So we've, they've had different context to do the same learning. It's not something that they learned at school. Mm. So those different spaces opportunities meant that their knowledge base became really secure and they were confident to talk to a bunch of strangers um so yeah that was that was pretty highlight for me that they have soaked it up often kids you know you you as a teacher you in a classroom and you ask kids to put their hand up when you're asking a question and you know you know that 30% of them know the answer but they just don't want to put their hands up you know because they don't want to look too smart but um, in small groups, and I think that's another great thing about Geek Camp, that you've got small groups of people to have a voice. And I think that's a big thing about Geek Camp, voice. Mm. You know, this podcast room, you know. Um, we've had kids in here, and I've been mean, really enjoying all the videos um, that you've done. Uh, but geek, kids' voice, authentic mm. voice, what do they really think? No, unrehearsed. That's what we do here. Unrehearsed. Yeah. Just off the cuff, from the heart. It's better unrehearsed. Yeah. I think. It's real. Bit, yeah, it is real. It's real. Yeah, and yeah. that's and I think that's what you're about and that's why mm. I like working with you. It's real. 
you know, some of it's not very pretty sometimes. <laughs> we don't always agree about everything. No, we don't. Um, but we have a robust discussion <laughs> and we come to a peaceful... Albeit uh, by text while I'm watching my niece play soccer. <laughs> or peace, peaceful outcome, yeah. It was a peaceful outcome, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I really admire that too. I think something that Will, Will who's on the other side of the camera, watches, um, he always says, I always say it how it is, and, and I guess that's what I try to do, and you do that too. I know you do that. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe that's where I've learned it from. You, you need to say what you need to say. Yeah, and you have just you, – you, I think – we can all we can say what you need to say, but you can say it kindly. Mm. I think you know sometimes we we get things off our chest, you know, with with anger. And I think that's a both. I think that's a, also something that I recognise with you about your spirit, because we both come from a deeply, you know, kind of uh, secure spiritual base um, about a human to human, heart to heart kind of um, foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we go forward and it's universal, you know, um, I love the way that you accept all the different cultures that come to accelerating our terror. It really truly mm. is, um, you know, an open space for all. And maybe being more intentional when the Chenrots are such a lovely family, um, all of them, and mm. I can't wait a baby girl now that now the wee boys yeah. snuck in. Except I said I can't take you off site until you turn eight. I just think that's unwise. Mm. Anyone who's listening, it's fair. Uh, well, it's fair. Yeah. It, well, in it's terms of our hard. resources, you know, yeah. we, we have to. We want to yeah. keep everybody safe, yeah. and we 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 mm. we run on an oily rag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, how can we be more intentional about particularly being inclusive of um, migrant? Mm. groups that are, that are living at Altara because we say that we're for any child in Altara yeah. and uh, we need to be intentional about that and is that something we can do through your homework clubs mm. um, or through just Fano that you happen to be working with? I think that it's really important question to ask for 2023 because there is um, currently immense um, growth mm. in housing in Altara and mm. the face of uh, Otara will change in the same mm. way that it's changing in other suburbs like Mangere. Mm. Um and so understanding how to get people to work together harmoniously and have that sense of equality is important um, I think that like there's a um, so in addition to the Panmio Homework Club there is a homework club at Dawson Library yes yeah, I know that you you're know? involved in so which I attend um, when I can and I mm. think perhaps um, inviting Geek Camp students to come there too mm. would be be good um, just to offer them a bit of uplift um, but better to invite them on a trip I think yeah I mean yeah that all the resources that go in into organising a day out just to go down the road to the libraries and I think what we could enough of it some a couple of things sociologically Hmm. you are more likely to repeat business to a certain location if you have been there before you know like it's like when you drive somewhere for the first time you know and you've got to use the GPS and you're like oh man it's so far away when you go there a second time it's kind of feels like a shorter distance mm. because you know you've traveled you traveled that road before mm. and I think it's the same with um uh going to say if you want to create a habit you know and habituate that process of accessing mm. help we've got to have an activation that arrives in the library but in a geek camp context you can't Going to the library is a bit boring and not very interesting unless there's something um, amazing to do when you get there. So Mm. maybe that's what we have to do. Create an opportunity of something amazing in terms of getting Mm. there. Because Tupo Youth Library is really special. Mm, You know, they have um, great library staff. You know, it's not a place where you have to be a quiet library. I mean, Mm. there are quiet spaces, but, um, you know, kids can play ping pong, They've got loads of devices for the kids to play with. It's mm. pretty neat space. Mm. Um, so there's lots of opportunities there. Maybe we could talk about that mm. and figure it out. What are other ideas if you got? What other, other things could we do? So so we've ended up talking about a destination where I was talking yeah. about engaging with other groups, which I think is the most important aspect. Mm. But but I get that the Tupi Library... Um, you know, you're building on the experience of going to the zoo... 
Um, I think that, you know, there's wow trips, you know, like mm. you've had your wow trip on the ferry mm. to Devonport. Mm. Well, um, I have worked with Uru Fukaro, uh to go out to Modatapu mm-hmm. um, to do some restoration work. Mm-hmm. And there's no reason why we can't include our Geek Camp kids to do that. Mm. Maybe they have to be a bit older um, because there are some challenges of being on a on an island um, that yeah. required quite more self management, mm. but that's I think that's quite important. Mm. And the key thing about Urufakaro is that they they do that trip um, because they want to offer Aucklanders who cannot afford I don't know what is it's just like ninety dollars. Sometimes some of the ferry trips are ninety dollars. You know, for an adult to go on a pest-free island, I mean, go figure. Oh, that's if you're going down the bottom end, yeah. I think uh, Rangitoto is, is nothing like that. It's um, not cheap. $26 return or something. No, it's more than that. So, um, anyway, I was thinking, we can go into some details later, but yeah, I think Rangitoto, Mototapu, um, you know, Rangi, the to- walk to the top's less than an hour. Mm. You know, we could train for that, we could go there. Mm. Um, we wouldn't. We'd need people to be pretty ambulatory, that's all. But um, I, I think Rangitoto and, and that looking back on the city and going, I mean, I was, I've done mm. it. Every time I go up there, it's incredible. It seems so incredible that you could be in such, so isolated in such a incredible place mm. you know, where you can't even have a tap except at the toilet. Um, and it's so close to Auckland. Yeah, Closer to home, you know, like there's mm. the 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 – how the where the Otara Creek traverses from East Tamaki Road to Flatbush, mm. you know, that part of the bush um, and uh, the, you know, Smells Farm as well. Mm. You know, Flatbush Primary have had this discussion about how it's um, in their pepeha and as, you know, as, a, as part of their, you know, signature of their mountain and yet it's not publicly accessible. Mm. So that's also we think we sort of so I think from a rec- in there. from a reclamation point of view, I think if from a um Te Amari perspective about identity, I think mm. that, that that would be a really Reclaim good... the Monga. Yeah, definitely. Or Tara. Just Puki or Tara. Exactly. It's not East. Exactly. Mm. Because that that um vista from the top of the hill is also quite interesting. Mm. You were talking about seeing the city, you know, from a from Pest Free Island, but just standing up from that vantage point and it was a lot higher before it all got quarried but um i think it's it's an area that everyone drives past and because it's not deemed public access that's why a lot of people don't know about it and auckland parks i've been on the auckland parks um experience to go up there uh, and hear the history and there were lots of unanswered questions Mm -hmm. um so i think that's probably quite a good one and yeah. it's around the corner. That makes it easy. It's part mm. of the hood, you know. Mm. Um, do the buses go along East Tamaki Road? They must do. The bus depot arrives at. Oh, down at the bottom, down yeah, by there. the church. Yeah. Okay. But, I th- but there's no reason why we can't do a deal with AT. I think. Yeah, I don't to want get to be... there. Yeah, of course. Well, we've got there, but we've already done a deal yeah. with them. We're part of their. We are their modest yeah. strategy. because so. they would mm. be. They would be going mm. going to the depot. Mm. You know, so it's not like they're I'm going out of their way. Home. They were, they would be, it's on their way home mm. type thing. Seems so. like the bus drivers are pretty cool and you're quite relaxed out here. Okay. Well, those are some cunning plans. I, I am excited. Yeah. yeah. There's lots to do and the kids want to go places. Mm. Um, and we can go places. And we can go places. And mm. um, and it costs, you know. Auckland Botanic Gardens everything. is always open, open door for us mm. at nothing. So I can mm. organise that. They're really happy to mm. have us. I see no reason why we should pay to visit public assets and, you know, I will mm. use all my might to do exactly what you've done there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Well, Pragna, thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for, yeah, your vision and your honesty and your integrity and and the energy that, that you bring every time you walk through the door. Thank like you. I said, Thank you for giving me the welcome, enabling mm. me to work with the kids. It's a really great team. Mm. Oh, we love Make, having brings, you. Brings brings me back. <laughs> Thank you.